Hello everybody and welcome to our first lesson on the subject of the law of tort. In this lesson what we're going to do is define and describe what it means to describe something as a tort and then we're going to outline the scope of this series of lessons. So essentially this is the purpose of this uh, lesson. It is to introduce the subject of tort law and it is also to look at what it means to call something a tort, what are the characteristics of a tort, what is a tort, what isn't a tort and then talk about the outline of the scope of this series in the future looking at the various different concepts that we're going to be covering, the various different torts that we're going to be covering, as well as the order in which we're going to be covering them. So in following this structure, the first question that we have to ask is, what is a tort? What do we mean when we talk about the law of tort? And one of the interesting things here is that despite the fact that tort is one of the oldest and, and widest, most expansive areas of law, it is one that is less understood colloquially, or it is at least understood intuitively by people, but it is not necessarily understood as um, in terms of its definition and the way in which we address these issues. So, for example, people might know about the concept of negligence uh, colloquially and intuitively, but they might not know that this represents a tort and what the word tort actually means. The word tort itself, if we're going to talk about just the etymology of the phrase, derives out the French meaning the word wrong, and this is really where we can find a more formal definition. A, a, a tort is essentially a civil wrong for which civil liability is incurred. And so the law of tort itself is a very wide-reaching and a very expansive uh, in terms of the content in which uh, it is covered. However, um, but for the most part, um, students at least today will be studying the law of tort and beginning with the first major tort, which is the most important in terms of litigation, this idea of negligence. Now, it should be noted, and we're going to note this in future lessons time, that negligence isn't actually or hasn't always actually been the most popular and most heavily litigated area of torts. In fact, that uh, that prize went to intentional torts, the torts of assault and battery and, and false imprisonment, etc. But in recent years, at least in terms of the last hundred years or so, uh, and and some of the most landmark cases around negligence made it more of an open door for the ability for litigation to be pursued in this particular area. Now, a more concise definition can be seen here from Brennan 2017, and they say that a tort can be described as the area of civil law which provides a remedy for a party who has suffered a breach of, suffered the breach, should I say, of a protected interest. Now, the reason why I particularly like this definition is because it doesn't define and specify what uh, each of the torts actually refers to. It just says a breach of a protected interest. And that essentially means that given that that's quite a vague use of language, it means that we can essentially say, well, what is in a protected interest and what protected interest could be uh, breached uh, and therefore give rise to liability within the law of tort? Well, essentially, what the protected interest that we're talking about for which a tort can be applied will depend on the particular tort that we're talking about. There are obvious examples. So your reputation is a protected interest which is protected by the tort of defamation. So essentially, if we were to plug in um, the, the, the word reputation for the idea of protected interest in this definition, we would define defamation as the tort which provides remedy for a party who has suffered a breach of their, uh, of their reputation or damage to their reputation. And this is the tort of defamation which is divided into both libel and slander laws. You also have protection of personal safety. That is a protected interest within the law of tort, and it is often covered by the tort of negligence. And we'll get to negligence in future lessons time. Essentially, if somebody has a duty of care towards you, and they breach that duty of care such that the breach causes some kind of harm to your personal safety or damage to your personal safety, then you may have a claim within the tort of negligence. In addition to this, we have a number of remedies within tort. We're going to look at remedies in tort in a future lesson after we've covered all of the individual torts in more detail. But for now, let's just examine the way in which tort operates uh, structurally and the sort of general philosophy behind the law of tort. 
And essentially, given the fact that tort is a wide ranging area of law, uh, one which encompasses a number of different acts. So you have nuisance, you have occupier's liability, you have vicarious liability, you have defamation, you have negligence, etc, etc. When it comes to remedies, there is often a a sort of blanket remedy that is applied in most tort cases, which is, of course, damages by way of some kind of financial compensation. That is the general gist of what uh, can be remedied within most areas of the law of tort. But this is not to suggest that, that compensation and financial compensation is the only way in which you can get remedy within the law of tort. To suggest that um, there, are, uh, there are other ways in which damages can be applied as other remedies um, to various different torts. So, for example, a court might grant an injunction in certain cases of tort. So one area why, where this might happen might be in the tort of nuisance. You can also have, if we go back to our previous slide, our looking at our definition of defamation, looking at reputational harm, a formal retraction and an apology that is made public could also be part of the remedy within uh, the tort of defamation. It often is in a lot of cases, um, given the fact that defamation protects the reputation of an individual against, uh, against false claims names the use of a, a formal retraction and a formal uh, setting of the record, shall we say, is actually quite useful within the tort of defamation. Let's think about the scope of this series in more detail. We're going to be dedicating a lot of our time to the study of the law of tort. This is going to provide a comprehensive study of this area of the law. And so in doing so, what we're going to do is structure out the content in the following way. We're going to begin by looking at an introduction to the law of tort. That is going to be the first major topic of this series. Um, it's not going to be particularly long. We're essentially going to be talking about a lot of subsidiary issues which pertain to the nature of tort and tortious activity, including the concept of damages, the idea of insurance within the law of tort, the interactions between the law of tort and other areas of the law, such as that of human rights, the criminal law and the law of contracts. So just generally taking an overview to the some of the basic issues relating to the law of tort. And then in the second major topic, we're going to start to get into the first of our torts that are the most important. We're going to be talking about negligence. We're going to talk about the quote unquote equation of negligence, each of the factors that are required to show a negligence claim and for a negligence claim to be successful. These include the duty of care, the breach of duty and the standard of care. Uh, and we're also then going to look at a number of subsidiary issues relating to negligence as well, namely particular issues within the subject of negligence. The two most important of which are, are of course, claims for psychiatric injury, the distinction and delineation between primary and secondary victimhood in this particular regard, as well as claims for pure economic loss and other kinds of economic loss, such as relational economic loss or consequential economic loss. We will then finally look at the last part of the quote equation of negligence and one of the issues that um, sort of transcends negligence and goes into a number of different tortious activities. This is this idea of causation. We'll talk about the idea of causation in fact, intervening causes, intervening acts within a particular um, tortious case, as well as the principle of remoteness of harm. All of this is very important for um, many different areas of tortious activity. We will then talk in the fifth topic about the delineation that can be made between acts and omissions. So what kind of uh, liability can be incurred, not necessarily for an act that is done, but for a failure to act. We know from our studies of the criminal law, for example, that omissions does not um, necessarily bring uh, a blanket uh, protection from criminal liability. You can be held criminally liable for omitting to do certain actions. And similarly, in the law of tort, you can and do the same. Essentially, we'll talk about the liability for emissions and the assumption of responsibility in that regard. We will then get on to the next of the major torts, which focuses on this idea of employers and vicarious liability. We'll talk about the development of liability for employers, statutory regulation of employers' liability, as well as via, uh, vicarious liability, requirements for vicarious liability, and liability for intentional acts.
Continuing on, we will then spend some time looking at the intentional torts which exist. These include the various trespass torts, so the rationale for an intentional tort, why intentional torts are actually um, actionable in, in the real world. The distinction between uh, the law of tort and criminal law is something that is made very, very patently aware in this case. So there are various intentional torts, specifically in this uh, list here we're talking about trespass to the person. This includes assault, battery, false imprisonment, as well as the tort of Wilkinson and Downton. And then we will talk about defences to trespass to the person before moving on to the final two trespass torts, which are referring to trespass to land and trespass to property, personal property. Continuing on then, we will talk about the tort of nuisance, um, the concept of nuisance, public versus private nuisance, as well as uh, the case of Rylands and Fletcher, defences to the case of Rylands and Fletcher, and implications of the case of Rylands and Fletcher before moving on to looking at the concept of occupier's liability. This is often codified in various pieces of legislation. So we're going to look at the Occupier's Liability Act of 1957, the Occupier's Liability Act of 1984, standards and duties that are set which arise out of the statute in relation to occupier's liability. Section 10 will look at the tort that we focused on in previous lesson, in previous slides, should I say, the concept of defamation. We'll look at what defamation actually is, the idea of reputational harm, the distinction that is made between libel and slander within the corpus of defamation, as well as showing, proving defamation and defences to defamation. And then the final major topic is going to essentially summarise all of these different areas and talk about various defences to tortious activities, limitations in terms of compensation and remedies for tortious activities. So defence to tortious action, remedies for tortious actions, as well as the principles of compensation. That is going to be the, uh, the subject matter for the following lessons on this particular topic.